Hello, security pros. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on today's ESA webinar, Touchless Unattended Visitor Management and Access Control Has Finally Arrived. Today's customers need to know the whereabouts of both their employees and their visitors. But why pay for security guards and receptionists when there now exists touchless unattended visitor management and access control systems that you can offer? These devices can check for valid appointments and identification, confirm health check questionnaires, scan for body temperature and face mask compliance, and then unlock doors or gates accordingly. These systems are surprisingly affordable and simple to install if you do your homework. This webinar is going to review how this new touchless technology works and best practices for installation. I'm Jillian Bateman, ESA's Chief Development Officer, and I'll be facilitating our discussion today before, before we dive in with our expert from ZK Techo, I do have some tips for you, for those of you joining us on your first ESA webinar. All callers will be muted for the duration of the webinar, but that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. At any point, please click the Q&A button at the bottom of your control panel there to pose a question or to pose a comment. There's no need to save these until the end of today's presentation. If something pops up, simply go ahead and ask it, and we'll ensure that we have time to address your questions with our expert today. We'll also be recording today's webinar, so you can watch the on-demand video at your leisure and share it with your colleagues. Just give us until tomorrow to get the video exported and hosted on the ESA website. You don't need to go digging around for it. We'll send you a link to the recording in your email and a thank you. We at ESA realize your time is valuable and we appreciate you spending some of that time with us today. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our expert, Larry Reed. Larry is a 15 year veteran in the biometrics industry. He cu he's currently CEO of ZK Techo USA, where he presides over several business units, including door access control, entrance control, time and attendance, and biometrics AI. Reed has specific application expertise in the fields of physical access control and time and attendance, and has helped well over 100 enterprise and SMB companies integrate a variety of biometric devices with their respective application software. Larry, we are so pleased to welcome you and ZK Techo to our ESA webinar stage. Let's go ahead and dive in. Great. Well, Jillian, thanks so much for that kind introduction. I'd like to remind the audience, um, Jillian and I would like to have as, a, as, as close to a conversation as possible. So please do enter any questions you have. Um, I don't believe we have so much content that will go over time. So we should have enough time to review the content as well as answer questions. Um, please also bear with me. I, I'm not purposely commercializing this presentation. Understandably, though, many of the slides do come from our own company's technology. So I'm going to try to keep this as general or uh, generic as possible, even though some of the slides do reference ZK Techo. I can assure you that um, there's nothing uh, or any one particular thing that we do that no other company in the world does. Just typically we do everything ourselves. So we're not beholden upon third parties. So by working with us, um, much of the technology is already available to you. You don't have to uh, reach out to various third parties, but I assure you, um, I will try not to commercialize this uh, as best I can. So let's kick this off. Um, everyone's probably getting sick of this term, the new normal, but um, it can't escape us. This is the new normal. How long will this will last? No one really knows. COVID-19 uh, kind of caught us uh, by surprise, at least in the Western hemisphere. However, these type of pandemics um, have been occurring in over uh, you know, 20, 30 years in other parts of the country that have uh, much more densely populated regions. So um, if you've seen um, you know, special procedures and practices with regards to avoiding the spread of infection from uh, Ebola virus to uh, bird flu and things like that, um, uh, checking people for body temperature at the border, um, this is all very normal um, in overseas um, countries. Uh, it's only new here in the U.S., thankfully. Um, we also have a lot to be thankful also, as bad as COVID-19 is, um, if you've heard Bill Gates speak, um, this is actually prepping us. It could have been far worse. So um, we're now at least 
accustomed to the new norm and different um, uh, you know, uh, social practices that um, discourage the spread of uh, infectious disease. So let, let's jump into this. This is a world that we should be in at least the ni next nine months and uh, perhaps longer than that. So kicking this off to the next slide, our agenda will be uh, just a brief review of uh, priorities as security professionals prior to COVID-19 and then the new norm. What are customers now focused upon uh, now that we're in this COVID-19 era? And then we're gonna to touch upon why is body temperature screening so prevalent? And why is the importance of visitor management uh, being reviewed today? Visitor management is a huge key component that's frankly been overlooked. Um, uh, we focus on access control, but visitor management has really been neglected. And you're going to see there's a tremendous market now for visitor management solutions. Um, also now is the notion of uh, occupancy control. Um, to many folks, this is not new. Others, it will be new. Uh, we don't want to have repeats of Black Friday last year when uh, retailers just open up their doors and let people stampede through the place. Um, it's tremendous liability, and uh, there are technologies now that address that, and that's all part of visitor management. We'll then uh, discuss the, uh, the, uh, the need for touchless unmanned visitor management. Touchless, kind of obvious. Everyone now is thinking hygiene. So touchless now is, is a key um, technology. And unmanned, of course, uh, eliminates the need for labor. And many of these solutions, the number one reason why uh, people are deploying unmanned solutions with regards to visitor management, occupancy control, is a cost of labor, frankly, in the US. Um, people, customers need to automate in order to save money. And it's so difficult now with all businesses shut down, um, businesses are desperate to uh, you know, reduce cost as much as they can. Um, unmanned visitor management, unmanned access control. We're also going to discuss uh, body temperature mask screening, uh, how that works and how that can complement what you're doing. Of course, with any technology, you need to be aware of best practices. Uh, much of this technology, it doesn't work out of the box. It requires the installer to be proficient with the technology and to also have the uh, cooperation of the end user. Um, if the end user doesn't cooperate, whatever investment they've spent actually is thrown out the window. And with all this technology and biometrics, customers do have privacy concerns. So we're going to address those also. So that's a pretty much a, a snapshot of the agenda. As Jillian uh, uh, mentioned, please um, uh, forward your questions in real time. Uh, Jillian knows me a while now, so she'll interrupt me if uh, she thinks it's a good idea, or we'll just keep uh, the content going. So with that, let's kick this off. This is not news to anyone on the call. What was life like before COVID-19? Here are your primary uh, security categories. Of course, fire suppression systems is always critical, uh, life safety. Uh, and of course, it's also often a, a source of uh, uh, recurring revenue when you're looking at fire suppression and intrusion systems. So um, that was foremost on the minds of most customers. And of course, access control. Um, still, uh, mechanical lock and key is the most popular way that uh, buildings restrict access. And uh, of course, proximity cards now is the most popular electronic uh, security. Uh, cards have always been utilized all through the years uh, for various different reasons. Of course, affordability, and there is close to 100% uh, working most of the time, at least. Uh, intrusion systems, a lot of times when people think security, they put up their security cameras. Um, to make sure if there is an intrusion of some kind, that there's some type of uh, visual evidence so that they can give that to the forensics experts and law enforcement, and of course, surveillance equipment as well. So these are the kind of things that occupied everyone's minds. Um, the end user, of course, uh, was, was uh, concerned with these things, and as security professionals, this is how we make our living. But those things are no longer the priority. Of course, the security will always be important, but Today, it's not about fire suppression. It's not about surveillance. It's not the most critical. What's most critical is how the heck are your customers going to reopen their business? If the business is not open, there's no need for security. You know, that, that, that's a no-brainer. So what do customers need today to reopen? Well, there's a whole bunch of technology, but really what it comes down to is reinstalling, uh, reinstilling uh, confidence. Confidence from the government that there won't be another second or third wave of COVID-19 if the government allows businesses to reopen. 
And certainly your employees need to be confident that if they return to work, that they're not gonna get exposed to someone else who's caught COVID-19 or, or frankly, any infectious disease. And of course, the customers, the people who are paying your bills, the customers are not gonna return to uh, uh, different leisure activities and shopping and school and so on, unless they have some uh, relatively high confidence that you know, themselves or their children are not gonna be exposed to COVID-19. So today it's all about reinstilling confidence before any security measures are required. How do you enable your clients to reopen their business? And this is also a tremendous conversation starter uh, because everyone is mindful of how the, biz how the business has been affected with COVID-19. So if you can bring up this one question to your clients, you know, what are you doing about reopening and how, what kind of impact has this had on your business? This is a conversation starter that I assure you at the conclusion of this presentation, you'll have a wealth of information to share with them and which will allow you to re-engage them. So with regards to reinstilling confidence, the ability to scan people for body temperature tends to be the most common way um, to uh, have some level of assurance that people aren't sick. Now, that's not to say that people could be carrying disease. So I'm not saying that measuring a bo someone's body temperature is a 100% guaranteed way to ensure nobody is sick. But certainly it's the number one technique to at least um, you know, filter out those who might be ill. And for anyone on the call who's traveled overseas, um, as soon as you enter the airport and you come off the gate, you are immediately uh, approached by security personnel that have handheld scanners that will walk right up to you and scan your forehead. Um, this actually scared the heck out of me about five years ago because they look like people that are going to stab you because this was not familiar to me at least. Uh, I'm 55 years old and in the U.S. I've never heard of the need to scan uh, for skin temperature before in my life. So it was a shock to me. But this is the number one way to at least um, um, have an initial screen of anybody who might be ill because often, uh, you know, elevated body temperature is a sign they might be carrying some infectious disease. And certainly in the last few months, I'm sure many of you on, on this call now have people measuring your skin temperature before you enter their work premise, um, whether it's uh, showing up at a nail salon or um, visiting a doctor or, or going to the gym. Typically, someone is paid to scan for your skin temperature, and there's a cost associated with that. So by, you know, absolutely body temperature scanning is the most prevalent way to at least reduce the likelihood of anyone sick coming into your place. Now, in addition to access control, visitor management is often overlooked. And this is key because if you think about it, the uh, visitors are almost similar to your customers, right? They're not your employees. So really you can refer to these people as uh, outsiders. And today's visitors, you wanna make sure that if they're gonna enter your workplace, that they're free from uh, fever and that they're wearing their masks. So visitor management now also a key element of, a, of allowing your business to open while at the same time maintaining some level of safety and health um, inside the, uh, the, uh, the work premise. Oh, and I apologize, my screen is frozen. Bear me with me one moment. There we go. So what's interesting, if you look at visitor management as a whole, um, it's had a growth rate of over 15% over the last few years carried into 2025. And uh, if you look at anticipated sales from uh, Xeon, you'll notice that a few years ago, it was a $1.2 billion market, and it's projected to reach $6 billion by 2025. And the reason this is significant is because so many companies invest all this money in restricting access to their, uh, to their facility from their employees, who they know, and also installing security cameras so if there's any after hours intrusion, there's some type of visual evidence, but what are they doing with the visitors that come to their facility every day? And still it's, it's amazing to me, but there's still so often paper log books. 
where people just show up with their driver's license or whatever ID, they just note their name, the reason why they're working, it goes in a logbook. But where's the accountability and, and how do you access that information if you discover there's some type of impropriety uh, a few days later, weeks later? So that's why more and more companies realize there's, it doesn't make sense to invest in uh, security and access control systems if you're not also restricting access from visitors. So visitor management is a huge market opportunity for those of you who haven't thought about it before. You can have all these security measures in place for your own employees and after hours, but if your visitors have free access to your building after they sign in with very limited screening, um, that, that's a potential problem. And I mentioned briefly before, part of visitor management is also how do you control incoming customers? How do you prevent this overcrowding? Uh, you know, not only do the fire marshals have concern because usually there's a maximum occupancy with most um, business establishments, but you know, how, how do you ensure a safe environment and provide uh, prevent people uh, from getting stampeded on every time there's a special like on Black Friday? So now occupancy control or people counting now is a very critical um, uh, component to the safety and security uh, of your patrons as well. Now, the downside of crowd control, if anyone has experienced this visiting grocery stores is, well, now you've got lines forming outside. So you wanna promote good health, but how does a business proprietor you know, get maximum throughput from getting his customers to come through? And how many customers probably just gave up from standing in line and went shopping elsewhere? So access control is not always about safety and health, but it's also about throughput because without throughput, there's no customer revenue to pay for anything. So that's why the automation of these things is so critical. And the opportunity this presents you as security professionals is typically security is like an after the fact kind of thing. And that's why it's almost looked like as, a, as an insurance policy. Because frankly speaking, if a business owner has not had any security issues, if there haven't been any thefts, no, no, uh, no, no, no intellectual property has been stolen, you know, how, how much concern are they going to have for security measures? They're going to have very little because they never had any intrusions. So they're typically not mindful of security or it doesn't really take a priority. However, today, security measures are enabling business. They're enabling business because now customers will return knowing they have some level of assuredness that they're not going to be exposed to something infectious. And with crowd control, you don't have to pay someone with a people counter to make sure not too many people are have entered the business establishment, which also uh, poses a safety risk. So it's not about securing a facility, it's about enabling business. And if you have that mindset, you're gonna find that all these customers who tell you they don't have any money because they've closed down or cut back, trust me, they have money if you have uh, technology that can enable their business to grow. That's the focus of this conversation. How do you help your clients enable their business? And trust me, they will find the money. So the next slide, and I hope you can hear this okay. This is a, a, um, a 90 second video, perhaps even shorter, but this shows the kind of technology that's available today that automates the visitor management process. You're gonna see an individual enter an establishment no need to be greeted by anybody um, until they actually have been scanned. But prior to coming to the business establishment, they're gonna receive an invitation on their phone with a unique QR code that identifies themselves and the, uh, their meeting. They'll then go through a temperature scan, perhaps some face recognition. And if they're cleared, there'll be a kiosk that will print out on paper a QR code that that person can then use to display to the entrance control technology, whether it's a gate or it's a turnstile. And only then will they be allowed inside because at that point in time, they've been screened uh, for uh, their elevated body temperature. They've been screened to make sure they have a mask. And they've also been identified to ensure they are who they say they are not an imposter. So I think you'll find this, uh, this uh, 90 second video interesting. And I hope you're still there for me when uh, it, could, it runs down. So uh, here we go. Manually processing visitors' arrival at your facility can consume your time and overlook health guidelines. 
putting your people at risk. ZK Techo is here to help. Introducing our FK1013 Plus Face Recognition Kiosk that has the ability to verify a visitor's identity and scheduled appointment, ensure they have an acceptable skin temperature, and confirm they're wearing a mask, all while recording the entire process for auditing and reporting purposes. The process is simple. Prior to visitors arriving for their appointment, their host will send an invitation to their phone which contains a unique QR code. Creating the invitation is quick and easy. When the visitor arrives, they display their QR code to the kiosk. The kiosk then scans the visitor's skin temperature to ensure it's within acceptable range. If requested, the kiosk will also check to ensure the visitor is wearing a protective face mask. After the kiosk confirms the visitor's identity, appointment, acceptable skin temperature, and that they're wearing a mask, the visitor's ticket will print. Simultaneously, the kiosk notifies the host that the visitor has arrived and is permitted to enter the facility. FK1013 Plus makes the visitor check-in process 100% automated and touchless. It provides safety, security, and auditing while delivering greater peace of mind for facilities managers, employees, and visitors. ZK Techo, your security, our responsibility. So if you noticed in that video, um, there was absolutely no need for anyone to screen them. Um, it wasn't until the, the, uh, the uh, kiosk actually had identified the person correctly and approved that their skin temperature and they were wearing a mask and all the uh, criteria was met. Only then were they allowed access to the facility. So thereby you reduce the risk of spreading any type of infectious disease. Now, I like to emphasize all the things that you just saw in that video um, ZK Techo did not invent them. They're all readily available. In fact, uh, many of your clients may already have some of this technology um, already in place. So with regards to ZK Techo, you can utilize our entire end-to-end -end solution, or perhaps your customers already have um, an existing visitor management system and they just want to add um, temperature screening and mass screening as an extra layer, or perhaps they want to have a, a, a turnstile or a gate added. So you know, all these uh, different pieces are certainly available from various different third parties, but hopefully watching that video gave, some, gave you some ideas to now approach your clients. And again, if the technology is designed to help them, uh, you know, open their business, that's when they're going to be paying attention. No one wants to throw in another security camera or throw in another access control solution if their business is struggling to reopen. So the various different components, it all started with a kiosk. And this is a visitor management kiosk. And it, it's it, what it's doing, if you noticed in the video, uh, when the person uh, approached it, after it checked for their uh, QR code and their body temperature and their mask compliance, it then printed out a QR code. And again, we're not the inventors of the QR code scanner. Most everyone now is familiar with this technology, especially when visiting restaurants, um, QR codes really are used more often now to avoid um, having to touch menus, touching surfaces. So it's very, very uh, well, well accepted QR code. So you want to have a, a kiosk in place of some type that can recognize the person that could also, based on the QR code, um, identify that the person is there for a specific meeting. And then it can also um, notify the person who uh, scheduled the meeting who's awaiting um, your arrival. So it all starts with a kiosk. Now, many times with these kiosks, or if you're booking flights um, through the airline industry, a lot of times now you also have to answer a health check uh, questionnaire. So it's very important to have this capability also. A lot of the business owners, um, they're, you know, they're happy that you pass the screening checks, but you know, in that moment, perhaps you might not have elevated body temperature, but what about your whereabouts for the last few days or weeks? So they at least want you to self-assess yourself before entering in the work premise. So it's very important to have a health screening process, um, either on the kiosk or perhaps even on your mobile app. Uh, when working with ZK Techo, uh, one of the things that keeps us the most busy is customizing these health check forms. 
So this way, the business owner, at least again, he's giving visitors the opportunity at least to you know, re-evaluate themselves, have them think about, have they been into any hot spots throughout the country? Have they had any symptoms and so on? So the next few slides, just give you some examples. Here's one from Bexar County that uh, they have a lot of bilingual uh, visitors. So the first thing it asked them, would you like to answer these questions in English or in Spanish? And they are also asked them, please review these um, you know, various different symptoms and confirm whether or not you've experienced them. Now, obviously not everyone is forced to tell the truth, but this at least helps with liability. Um, you know, in the event that someone does contract COVID or something else, uh, at least you have uh, people signing off that they were free of these symptoms. And um, if they had not known or they lied about it, well, at least the business owner or the property manager at least can show that at least they took measures at least to try to um, you know, limit the amount of, uh, or prevent people who are sick from entering their uh, workspace. And it's a good idea, you know, to always uh, customize these health screen checks with your own company logo. You want to personalize it. So it's a nice uh, way to have additional digital signage when your guests um, enter your workplace. Here's some more examples of questions that you need to answer. Have you experienced a cough or, or sore throat or so on? So it's a good idea whenever you have any type of visitor management system and you're, you're screening for health um, uh, verification, you want to have the ability to uh, offer a customized um, health screening uh, check either on the kiosk itself or on the phone. So let's kind of walk through what you saw in that video and we'll take it step by step. There are basically two scenarios. One is, of course, we're, we're walk-in guests. Uh, many of your clients may not have people who schedule themselves ahead of time, uh, whether they're um, showing up at the beauty salon or perhaps, um, well, typically with doctor's office, you would have a scheduled visit, but perhaps a restaurant or some type of recreational activity. So for when people have walked in with it, when they've not been previously invited, um, wait one second. Okay. So the first thing that happens is a visitor will just walk in from the street. And when they arrive at the workplace or the beauty salon, wherever the case there is, typically there will be a, a QR code that's printed on the wall. Um, very similar to anyone who's gone out to restaurants who don't pass out menus anymore. Typically the QR code will open up a URL on your phone and that's where you can actually start the check-in process. So the person or the visitor shows up, there's a printed QR code in the lobby or near the reception area and then they scan it with their cell phone. At that point, the QR code opens up a URL, uh, no different than restaurants that have QR codes instead of uh, menus that they hand out. And then at that point, the visitor will have the ability to enter in their information that's specific to that visit, who their name is, um, who they're visiting, the purpose of their visit, and so on. And then once they complete that, then the, the, uh, the uh, QR code providing you access is then sent to your phone and that allows you to identify yourself. So then the visitor with that new QR code approaches a display. And if you notice the, uh, the young girl in that video, that's exactly what she did. She went to the display with a QR code on her phone. You display that to the kiosk and that's how you identify who you are as well as the uh, reason for your meeting. And then afterwards, if you'll recall from the video, after the kiosk has confirmed the identity of the person and the fact they have in fact scheduled themselves a, an appointment, then the kiosk will run them through a temperature scan and then a mass compliance scan. And if both uh, show negative for any uh, signs of illness, then the kiosk will produce a, a printed uh, badge. So that was scenario one when somebody walks off the street. Now, the, the second scenario, of course, is if, if the visitor has actually been invited by the host. And it's almost the exact same process. The only difference is, how does that visitor get that QR code sent to their phone? So if we walk through this process, the first thing that will happen, if you noticed in the video, is uh, the person who works at the establishment uh, typically an employee or someone at the front desk or someone who's in charge of the calendar and scheduling uh, clients and patients. They'll open up the software 
and they'll create the actual um, uh, invitation for the person who wishes to visit uh, their workplace. So the host logs into the web application, either from their phone or from a computer. And then the host, instead of the visitor, the host will enter in all the visitor's details, their name, their phone number, their email address, and the purpose of that visit. Uh, perhaps there might be a, one particular meeting room. So any details that are unique to that meeting. Once that meeting or invitation is created, then the visitor will automatically receive a QR code sent to their phone. And additionally, a questionnaire. That, that's optional based on um, the, the business owner. So now the visitor's got that QR code back on their phone and the process kind of repeats itself. The visitor then displays their QR code to the kiosk. The kiosk will then identify that person. You could have additional face recognition or any other types of uh, recognition technology to ensure that the person is not an imposter. It also, the QR code uh, also validates their meeting. And then once that's confirmed, the visitor again is checked for elevated body temperature and for mass compliance. And if all those parameters are met, again, a badge prints out from the uh, kiosk. You also wanna make sure that with any visitor management software, whether it's with ZK Techo or some third party, you, of course, you always wanna have access to the reporting or the accountability. And that's the power of an electronic system as opposed to a, a handwritten paper logbook. You wanna make sure that the reports can be customized based on your requirements. But at the very least, of course, you're gonna to wanna to see who visited your establishment, what was the purpose of their visit? And if you had multiple meeting locations, you know, which meeting or conference room uh, did they attend? And part of that data, you're also gonna to wanna to know what was the temperature of that person when they checked in? And also what was the temperature when they checked out just for additional uh, auditing purposes? And you can additionally have their photograph taken um, at check-in time and also uh, when they check out. Uh, it's very important to note that uh, the photo taking is typically for just a, some visual feedback that the system recognized you. Or if you do wish to uh, hire a guard to complement the system, you could have the person's photo appear on the guard's computer. It's not necessary. People are becoming more sensitive to uh, privacy concerns with regards uh, to the use of faces but it is optional for you. So what are the advantages of automating this visitor management or having an electronic system? Of course, you have access now real time to reports on any basis. Uh, you wanna know what the visitors that came in that were denied because that elevated body temperature or masks. You might wanna have uh, a notification of all the visitors that came to your office during the week uh, for staffing purposes. You know, there's no sense to have a lot of staff um, um, on payroll, if there's no one visiting your, 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 your workplace during certain days of the week or certain hours of the day. So this can also help you better manage your expenses. Um, you're now automating the uh, process either through a, a text message or email notification when the visitor arrives. And again, this is all um, very nicely illustrated in the video that we just showed for you. And of course, with the visitor management, with the body temperature mass screening, now you can be assured at least people entering the building at least didn't have any signs of elevated body temperature and they were wearing their mask. Now, this by no means is any guarantee that people entering your workplace uh, are not carrying a disease. Some carriers are not symptomatic. So by no means is this you know, preventing the spread of disease. This is lessening the likelihood of catching somebody from somebody. And it also is very good for public image sake because as a business owner, you want your customers to know that you're taking proactive measures to ensure the health and safety of your customers. So this is a very good public relations um, gesture. So we say when you automate visitor management, it really is a win, win, win if you think about it. You know, if you're a building manager or a property manager, you're improving security, of course, because now instead of relying on one person to check a driver's license, um, you're now having an automated means by which you're verifying they say who they, they are because only people that receive a QR code sent to their phone can actually prove they're the people who actually were invited. And the system is very fast when you automate 
the uh, processing of visitors, people can get enter your, your the, the workplace much faster, and you'll have less likelihood of lines backing up. Of course, it's a win for the people who actually inhabit the building, uh, the employees or the tenants. Um, if you're an apartment building or the employees, because now they know that the people entering their workspace are also free from elevated temperature. Um, if you're um, um, in, in, in making sure that everyone's wearing their mask, you also can ensure that's being taken care of. So now you've got the peace of mind of people returning to work and customers visiting that they know you're taking as a business owner protective or proactive measures to ensure um, that um, you know at least it's less likely people having fever or not wearing their mask or entering the workplace. And of course, for the visitors, if you noticed, I showed a, a slide image before of a line of uh, grocery shoppers outside the store waiting in line because they were all being processed one at a time. Well, when you can automate the visitor management process, you improve the throughput. Therefore, you've got more customers coming into your store, spending their money. And because you're improving the experience for the customer of not having to sit in line, it's more likely that you'll have repeat business. They're gonna to wanna to come back because of the visitor processing uh, was so much faster and, and more convenient. So that's why we say when you automate visitor management and especially when you add body temperature scanning and mask compliance scanning, it really is a win-win-win all across the board. So we talked about visitor management now let's get to touchless access control. This is where you can truly eliminate the need to having security guards because when your visitor management now is ensuring the identity of the people visiting and you're also checking for elevated body temperature and mask compliance, if you could tie that into your turnstile or your gate or whatever physical barrier you, you have restricting access from people outside entering your workplace, that's really an end-to-end -end solution, truly touchless and uh, unmanned. So let's have a look at uh, how that works in this video, which is about 90 seconds. A manned lobby can consume time and resources while overlooking health guidelines, putting your people at risk. ZK Techo is here to help. Introducing our model SBTL8000 with SpeedFace Plus, an optical swing barrier turnstile that will verify identity and ensure acceptable skin temperature with field upgradable control panel design. The process is quick and simple. First, users approach the turnstile. The SpeedFace Plus device will verify their identity with face recognition technology, eliminating the need for an ID card. The device will also conduct a skin temperature check to confirm if it's in acceptable range. Once identity and acceptable skin temperature are confirmed, the turnstile will release, allowing the user to enter the facility. SBTL8000 provides field upgradable flexibility, safety, and security while giving greater peace of mind for facilities managers, employees, and visitors. ZK Techo, your security, our responsibility. So I'd like to remind everybody on the call, again, ZK Techo, we're not the only providers of anything that you've seen in this webinar. Uh, we do manufacture everything you saw, but that's why it's important to note, um, you know, you can find third-party providers of any of this technology. If you have a preferred turnstile maker, that's fine because you can integrate body temperature readers and visitor management kiosks with the turnstile. So all these solutions are all interoperable and they can be integrated. Uh, perhaps not out of the box, but in some cases it is possible out of the box. So that's why I don't want to commercialize this. I just want you all being mindful that if this was a normal world and COVID-19 had not occurred, at that point, all the technology that you've seen in this webinar, it's simply just a nice to have. Yes, if I've got extra money in the budget, I can put a very beautiful turnstile in my lobby. It's very expensive, but it looks very nice. And so the customers will know that, you know, I'm very image conscious, you know, that's when security becomes an afterthought. But the technology you're seeing in this presentation, this is all business enabling technology. It's not a turnstile to look nice in your lobby. It's a turnstile that's preventing anyone from elevated body temperature entering the work premise and potentially getting your employees sick. So that's why you really need to change the mindset when you look at these things. 
Customers may not have a budget for a turnstile as an afterthought, but I assure you, if not having a turnstile or gate is preventing them from having customers regain confidence to return to their store, you bet they'll find money for these technologies. In this video, you saw an example of, our, of a swing barrier gate, our SPTL 8000, um, but it's one of any turnstiles that are readily available in the marketplace. So I just encourage you, consider gates and turnstiles as a way to eliminate the need for paying a security guard, which can be very, very expensive. You also saw on that turnstile is a, uh, what we call as a speed face. This is a body temperature reader that's also doing face recognition. Um, it can be used with the turnstile. It can also be used for time and attendance, event management, visitor management. These are all front end devices that are recognizing faces and palms. So it's completely touchless. So here it's very, very hygienic. And this has a traditional thermopile sensor. And in some areas where you have to install these devices too close to an exterior door or window where the temperature is constantly changing or you've got drafts, we would recommend using a device that has a thermographic camera instead of the thermopile sensor. The thermographic cameras uh, tend to be much more accurate and they can self calibrate. So if you do have to install these devices near a revolving door or exterior door, um, or if you're in a climate in the, you know, wherever you are, where you've got very hot summers or very cold winters, you might be better off choosing a device that has got a thermographic camera. But regardless, most of the devices on the market, they recognize faces. With ZK, we could also recognize palms. Um, we can recognize faces with or without their masks. So this is a terrific access control solution. Uh, whether it's on a freestanding pole and you just have it lighting up an LED or triggering a bell, or if you actually have it connected to your existing access control system. Uh, many of our customers are using this as an added layer of safety um, by connecting it to their card access system. So even though they may have access rights from their card, if they don't pass a body temperature or mass compliance scan, that card will not work and that turnstile door gate will deny them access. So come, you know, very important to think about. You don't have to replace anything that if your customer has an existing access control system, use a body temperature mass scanner to complement it. You should become familiar with the difference between a thermopile sensor and a thermal imaging camera. Um, you know, a lot of devices on the market, there's so many of them. Uh, many of them are comparable, but you really have to look at uh, what type of sensor are they utilizing so you can get an understanding of you know, whether it will meet your needs. Um, as mentioned before, the thermal imaging camera, um, it doesn't need to be calibrated. So whether it's installed in a hot environment or a cold environment, it's gonna self calibrate. Um, it can also read people from further away. And it's also more accurate because it's got 10 times more uh, measuring points on the face. So um, if, you, if you absolutely need a very accurate device, and you need one that automatically calibrates by itself, typically the thermographic, or rather the thermal imaging camera, tends to run about 30% more expensive than the thermopile. If, however, you have a climate-controlled room, then absolutely you can save yourself money and go with a traditional um, device that's got a thermopile sensor. Now, many of these devices are available on the market, but what really matters is the software behind the device. Um, I've seen devices as cheap as $200 because they, they'll just beep when they see elevated body temperature. Um, if that's all you need, go for it. However, if you really need accounting and real-time monitoring after someone's been detected, you want to have a back-end software. So this is just a screenshot of our software that's doing real-time monitoring. Every time someone walks past it, we're taking their photo, which is optional. As mentioned before, these devices that, at least what ZK manufactures, we're not matching faces, we're matching biometric templates. So if you've got privacy concerns, you don't have to have the face uh, appear on the device. And as each person goes through the device, we're noting their temperature, we're noticing if they had a mask, if they're registered on the system, we'll mention their name, their department, and so on. So you want to make sure from, a, from an accounting perspective, from a monitoring and notification perspective, you've got software that's running with these devices. Here's a typical raw record of all the data that's pulled off whenever um, anyone is detected. As mentioned before, you can get, if the person is registered, you'll have their name recorded. If they're not registered, you'll have an unknown name uh, person recorded. Um, some of our customers, they want notifications 
but they don't want people identified for privacy reasons. So anytime someone unregistered has an elevated body temperature, they'll receive a notification in real time. So it's real important to have access to this data. So here's some best practices I'm gonna go through quickly. We're running down on time. I wanna make sure everyone's got um, plenty of time to answer their questions. So I'll go through quickly. Um, when you install these devices, again, these are not oral thermometers. They're reading skin temperature. So if you use common sense, wherever skin temperature might be affected, you wanna to try to avoid that so you have very accurate, consistent reads. So that's why we say number one for installation, you wanna install them away from exterior doors and windows that are susceptible to possible uh, uh, temperature variations. And you know, if you think about it, that's why human beings, we perspire when we're hot because water lowers your, your temperature. Well, likewise, if you put a body temperature reader anywhere near uh, a breeze, or if there's a moisture or it's high humidity, anything that might lower skin temperature, the device is not gonna be as accurate. So you wanna avoid those uh, types of environments. You wanna keep them away, at least 10 feet away. Um, the devices, they typically should be installed about five and a half feet above the ground if you're gonna do a wall mount because that's the average uh, height of most Americans, male and female. Um, actually, uh, uh, I can't say which one, but one of the, one of the uh, very famous sports franchises in the U.S. has very tall athletes. <laughs> so they actually have two readers for every access point. One is for average height people, and then the other is for the, the, uh, the athletes themselves. So sometimes you do have to uh, account for uh, extreme variations in that way. Um, you also don't want to put too many readers close together. Uh, many sports stadiums have multiple turnstiles right next to one another. You always want to keep some space between the readers. And, um, and if they do have to be installed near the exterior, um, when you install them, give the device at least 30 minutes to warm up and acclimate itself to the environment. Likewise, if you've got people immediately coming out in from the outdoors when it was very, very hot or very, very cold, you're probably going to want to ask them to at least um, you know, relax for at least a minute or two and let their body temperature or their skin temperature return back to normal. So these, these are numerous um, uh, tips that we recommend. Certainly uh, feel free to get in touch with me after the uh, webinar if you'd like to review a few of them. Um, you also, from an operational perspective, you're gonna wanna decide, do you wanna, reg you wanna recognize all the users or not? And if you don't wanna recognize your users due to privacy concerns, you can turn that off and just have the device record if an elevated body temperature was recognized or not. And then you can also decide whether or not you want the device to scan for people with their mask on. So this is all customizable. The end user could decide what they want to um, scan for. Now, if you are doing uh, recognition or biometric recognition, if people do have privacy concerns, um, they really should not. Because as mentioned before, the devices only are storing faces for visual feedback. But if you have concerns, or your customers have concerns or your visitors have concerns, they don't want their face being registered, that's fine because these devices are utilizing biometric technology. They're not copying a face. What they do is whether it's fingerprint recognition or face recognition or palm recognition, all the device is doing is taking a few points or minutia points from those images, then using a proprietary algorithm and converting it into a series of zeros and ones. And that's what a template is. It's just a binary file consisting of zeros and ones. Even if you hacked this or reverse engineered it, that binary cannot reproduce the image of the face or the finger. So that information is only relevant to the device that created it. So once that template is created and on the database, when you return to that access point to try to get through it, the device will do the same process all over again. It will see your live face or finger or palm or whatever you're using. It'll convert that into zeros and ones. And then it will search the database to see if there's a match. And if there's a match, the, the gate will unlock, the elevator will go, will go up, the light will turn on. Whatever 12 volt peripheral device you have that, um, that you wanna be controlled with biometrics, it'll turn on. So why touchless visitor management access control? If you think about it, it's all common sense. You wanna have a touches visitor authentication management system because you wanna improve or promote health and safety 
among everyone who's using it. It's an excellent public relations get, um, um, uh, tool. And also you can have digital signage on your kiosk or you can have the customer's um, company name pop up. So it gives them that like warm, good feeling whenever they come visit with you. And if they know that you're uh, scanning for body temperature and mask compliance, again, brownie points, PR points. Um, you can also reduce the cost of managing your check-in process because you'll eliminate the need for security guards. This is all automated if you want. You can completely automate the process or you can have it work in combination with a security guard. So it's really up to you and your client. And as, as you saw before, once you automate visitor management, you're gonna shorten that wait time. So not only will you be able to process more customers, more visitors, uh, have more people in your store, but the person visiting you is just gonna have a, a much more pleasant experience and more likely visiting your workplace as opposed to you know, being stuck outside with your shopping cart like you saw in that video before. So you wanna promote health while at the same time having a convenient, pleasant experience as possible for your customers. And lastly, of course, you wanna enhance safety and security. That's why having touchless, of course, um, um, is so uh, uh, common now, whether it's touchless access control or going to a restaurant and not having people touching the, the menu. So touchless, absolutely long-term is a technology that will remain. So Julian, with that, I, I apologize. I kind of got on, on a roll and I, I apologize for not pausing in between, but that concludes the content I was gonna share with everyone and uh, whatever remaining time we have, uh, I'd welcome questions. So I wanna remind everybody, if you click that Q and A icon at the bottom of your interface, you can pose a question to Larry. I do have a few here. Um, do you offer SDKs for third party integrations? Yeah, that, that's absolutely huge. And anyone on the call, please, you should not work with any vendor unless they offer these development tools because that's the only way an application can be written to address your specific needs. Um, these devices, we've done a lot of research and really they're only manufactured by a handful of, of uh, manufacturers overseas. Most everyone that you see in the market are reselling that original technology. And if they're reselling it, you have to question their ability to provide you development tools. You have to question their ability to provide you tech support. You have to question their ability to provide you customization. Um, you know, that $200 device I mentioned on the wall, it's great if you just want something to beep every time someone has an elevated temperature. But if you need a solution, whether it's visitor management or access control or event management, you're absolutely going to want to work with a vendor that has those tools available. And ZK Techo, as the original equipment manufacturer, we gladly make our development tools available. Thank you. Um, how long does it take one person to get through the turnstile reader? Well, most people are familiar with walking through a turnstile by using a card. Doing a body temperature scan probably adds no more than two seconds. It's really just a matter of how quickly you, uh, you, know, you get yourself in front of the scanner. And if you're using a thermal imaging camera, um, now you're talking about probably like less than a second. So it really is lightning quick, which is why I believe long term, um, when you go to authenticate, I think body temperature detection, because prices are coming down, due to competition. I think this is the norm. Uh, authentication with uh, health screening is gonna become the norm. Okay. Do you use your own face recognition algorithm at ZK Techo or is it third party? Yeah, again, another great question. We manufacture and design everything ourselves. Uh, we're, we are foremost a security company. Uh, a lot of the companies that you see now on the internet um, they're a kiosk maker, they're a camera maker, they're a, a food safety product maker, and then they have to purchase third party um, you know, uh, you know, solutions to have visitor management, body temperature recognition, and so on. With ZK Techo, we are the original equipment manufacturer, and we make absolutely everything you just saw in that video, with the exception of the thermal sensor. Uh, none of the companies that you've, you've seen on the internet are actually making those sensors. Those sensors, again, are only made by a handful of companies. And um, ZK and, the, and all of our competitors are integrating those sensors with our devices. But everything else is manufactured by ZK, including the biometric uh, technology. You get the gold star for questions, Matt. 
<laughs> All right, we've got another one. Does this require cloud services or does it function off of a local server? Yeah, again, um, I, I apologize for repeating myself. Um, another great question. It all depends on how you, the customer, wish to manage your data. So with ZK, if you use our software, um, you can just keep it on premise on a computer. We have a, a Windows based software, which is, has a web browser. So in that case, the customer has 100% control of the data and the ZK has no access to that data. Uh, however, if you're using um, you know, cloud-based access control, cloud-based visitor management, at that point, the data is in the cloud. So with ZK, you have your choice of using on-premise or cloud-based solutions. And most of our competitors, frankly, they force you to go cloud-based because they want you to pay uh, the recurring cost. So, but with ZK, you have the option of either on-premise or cloud. Thanks, Larry. Um, so a follow-up to some of the manufacturing um, answers you gave. Sure. Uh, you make the hardware, but who wrote the FR software, face recognition, I assume? Yeah, everything is everything is written by ZK Techo. We write the we uh, we not only we manufacture the devices, which include a variety of face recognition readers, palm recognition readers. We also manufacture fingerprint readers, finger vein recognition readers, uh, multi biometric readers. So we manufacture all that hardware, and we also write all the matching algorithms. So that's all ZK Techo. Does ZK Techo sell the products direct to end user or do they rely on integrator partners to install and maintain the solutions? Yeah, everything goes through our sales channel. Our partners purchase through distribution. Uh, however, for all the dealers, the integrators, that relationship is direct. So if you need um, training, if uh, you need us to help you with bills of material, if you wanna help us do webinars with you and your clients. So we have a very close working relationship with our dealers. However, all the purchasing goes through distribution. Thanks for your question, John. Could you talk a little bit more, Larry, about the training that you offer your integrator partners? Yeah, sure. Well, right now, um, uh, up until recently, all the training um, has typically been free. However, some of the more advanced software applications um, for instance, um, the ZK biosecurity software, if you, all you need to do is manage the devices, then the, there, there is a, there's no fee-based training. We make that available for free. We also have training videos and, and material. However, for any of the partners who wanna actually implement visitor management or implement access control, well, wherever there's you know, additional complexity, we do have certification uh, courses that we offer those partners. So there's a combination of free training as well as uh, fee-based certification training. Okay, um, back to the um, access control. Do you have metal detector versions? Yeah, you know, control? yeah, I, I would encourage everyone, uh, please do visit our YouTube channel and you'll actually see several videos um, we have a variety of walkthrough metal detectors. The one that you saw, um, I don't believe I showed on the video uh, in this presentation, but we have a metal detector that also has an integrated um, thermal sensor. So as you approach the metal detector, you can uh, be scanned for both uh, elevated body temperature as well as any concealed metal objects. So we call that our walkthrough metal detector WMD318+. plus. In the ZK Techo product line, if ever you see a plus sign, that means we've additionally added uh, body temperature detection. If you have any final questions for Larry, go ahead and type them in here. I've got one last one. Um, is your FR software tested by NIST as part of the FR vendor tests? Uh, no, not currently. Um, any, any type of third party, including NIST, always requires a fee. And thus far, we've had no, none of our clients have demanded that from us. Basically, they get the demonstration equipment and, um, and you know, they compare it with our competitors. And if they're happy, they proceed with a purchase. Uh, if anyone on the line absolutely needs that to make a purchase decision, um, please consider co-funding that effort. And I wouldn't mind doing it for you. But we've since sold over 6,000, close to 7,000 of these readers and uh, none have come back. So um, I understand best case scenario, everyone would love to have that from every vendor. We don't have it, but that should not discourage anyone uh, from utilizing the technology. And again, if it's required, I'll certainly be willing to pay for that 
if, um, if it's necessary and if you're willing to co-fund it or if there's business justification for it. It looks like those are all the questions. We're right up at the top of the hour. I want to thank Larry and thank ZK Teco for the content shared on today's webinar and remind you that the session was recorded and you'll receive a link to the recording tomorrow in a thank you email. Larry, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much. Oh, Joy, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining on this call. I hope you found it beneficial. Bye, everyone.